So I think uh, we are here now. Uh, we are we here. in Facebook. So happy to have you with us, Marie Therese, because I know you are in East Canada. So you wake up, or West Canada. So you woke up quite early this morning to be there. And uh, today is a special day. In, in Europe, we are almost finishing the day, but you are starting. So it's kind of symbolic. Um, happy uh, Earth Day, that's how it's called. And um, I wanted to have this moment and this conversation with you to help our audience and our viewer to be more conscious about uh, the air we breathe, and then we will talk about many other things. So I want you to know that Marie-Thérèse, we met each other in 2015 in an international event in the United States. And um, Marie-Thérèse has been involved in many uh, volunteer projects all over the world because she even lived in Africa, and if I remember, and in other parts. She has a very interesting life and very involved also with the different projects in the environment with the United Nations directly or indirectly. So she can tell us more about that. So I'm happy to have you with us, Marie-Thérèse. If you want to say a few words about you and, and why you are exciting and you said yes I'm to my invitation. Well, hello, Veronique, and yes, happy Earth Day. This is a special day and it should be a special day every day. Um, so yes, we met in 2015 and 2015 was a really pivotal year for me because a lot of things came together then, um, including the awareness of uh, the connection between breath and the environment. And um, it's, um, and also visualization, the power of how we create anything is through imagining it, which is visualization and then focusing on it and then you know putting our energy towards it and then it gets done i mean that's how we managed to get you know a spaceship or whatever it's called on mars and uh, and people walking on the moon um everything absolutely everything first started that way so um i kind of pulled it all together or it got pulled all together for me to then see and it made perfect sense that um, it was something really important for us to do every day to um, stop and give ourselves the time to envision a healthy planet. And the breath works its way into that in one way because it puts us in a state of, uh, of relaxation and it opens up the door to the world of imagination and visualization and possibilities. But the other side of the breath is what we're going to talk about mostly today, I think. And that's its connection to the environment and that that is undeniable. So that's something that I get really excited about when I talk. Yeah, and um, one thing I wanted to start with because we're gonna go back to the power of visualization like you said, no? One thing I wanted to start with is when you explain, and, and Marie-Thérèse is part of our group of World Breathing Day group. We just had on the 11th of April, uh, our International uh, Day of Breath or World Breathing Day, that's how we call it. And um, so I, I really like when, when she talks and she gets inspired uh, in our meetings about the connection between the breath and the air. And you, Probably we all think, okay, fine, the air is oxygen, so I breathe the oxygen and that's it, no? But when she talks about it, it's so special. So I want you to explain to everybody the magic of, uh, of this connection. Well, let's start by taking that breath. And then asking ourselves, what is it that I'm breathing? And the answer may be obvious to some, but it's surprisingly not obvious to most, and it wasn't obvious to me, but what we're breathing is the biosphere. And I call it the trinity of the biosphere because it's three major organs of earth. And I, I consider them the respiratory organs of earth. Um, they are the ocean primarily, 
the forests and the soils, which we often don't think about, but they also are part of Earth's respiratory system. So when we breathe, we are breathing in the oxygen that they create. And when we exhale, they breathe in our CO2 and transform it into oxygen that we then breathe in again. So there's this incredible connection that we have with these three major organs of earth every time we breathe. And we breathe, I've heard different numbers, but it's about 27,000 times, could be up to 30,000 times, depending on our level of activity and our age, and maybe our level of health, I'm not sure. Um, but it's, it's 30,000 times or 27,000 times that we are in direct relationship with Earth every single day. And it is the most important thing that we are connected to on Earth. There's food and water that are also essential, but air, if we don't breathe for three minutes, most of us are dead. So that's how vital and essential it is. And whenever I think about that, it's just like, wow, wow. It just, uh, it, it blows my mind. And I hope that it's something that inspires um, a lot of people to consider just how important it is to protect and safeguard these respiratory organs of earth. Because not only are we, are, are they, so we talk about the biosphere, but the biosphere is what makes our atmosphere breathable. So when we talk about climate change, we're talking about those organs. We're talking about the biosphere. We're talking about the atmosphere. We're talking about our breath. When we talk about climate change, it's as, it's as um, close to us as our breath. It's as personal as our breath. So that's a message I, I hope really gets out to everybody. Now, I, listening to you, I understand even more how we call the earth, the mother earth, not only because we are sitting on it or we are walking on it, but because it's like the baby in the womb that needs, the, the baby is breathing the breath and the oxygen and all the, the nutrition of the mother constantly. Yes. Every, to every beat of his heart, something is resonating with the mother. So this this interaction of giving and receiving, which is like you're saying, no, every, every breath is a giving and a receiving. Uh, we give back to her and we receive again. And it's when you think about it, wow, it's makes me goosebumps and it's really yeah. amazing. When yeah. It's beautiful it that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I loved the, the motion that you, that you made when you were talking about it, the giving and the receiving it's, it's the sign of the, um, the infinity. The infinity, yes, that, that, exactly. And that's what it is. So breathing in and then breathing out and, and the connection that's there. And it's, uh, I, I used to think of it as circular until yesterday. And then I realized that it is like the infinity symbol. It is that connection that, and the ones who really understand how important this is, are the astronauts, the people who go up into space. Yeah. And they realize just how connected, so that umbilical cord that's connected to Earth is, how, how do you reproduce that to be able to go and live on another planet? It's just, you know, that's, that's a huge challenge because Earth has absolutely everything we need, everything. Right. Mm -hmm. We grew up with it, we are part of it. We are made of it. We crawled out of the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Out of her room. So I guess for the people, it's easier to understand why, because we, we teach that at school, no? The, the forest, the trees, the plants. But about the ocean, for example, it's a, a little bit less known maybe for, for the people who are listening. So I would like you to express us a little bit how how the ocean, what's the importance of the ocean for the air? And then oh the God. soil also. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to give me a, a, a scientific numbers, huh? but... Uh... No, because I couldn't. I'm not <laughs> a scientist. <laughs> uh, 
I, um, well, the ocean is, um, it, it's the main organ of, of the respiratory system of earth. And therefore it's the main, main organ for us. Um, it, it produces at least 50% of the air we breathe. And I've heard numbers as high as 83% or 85%. Um, maybe that depends on where we live, I'm not sure. Um, but the ocean, it's not the water itself. It's all of the living things in the water. It's the, the seagrass, it's the, 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 the plankton, I believe. Um, again, I'm not a scientist, so I just, I just hear the numbers and then the, the, the images come into my mind of what it actually looks like and what, what it means. Um, but every other breath, at, very, at the very least, every second breath we take in, we're breathing in um, microscopic sea life. Mm. That's so it's more than just, you know, the vision of it and stuff. It's, it's, phys it's a physical experience okay. that we're sharing with the ocean. And pretty interesting to understand. And I don't know if any research has been done, probably, on what does that microscopic life do to us? Why is it important in our systems? We're taking it in, so it must have some kind of, 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 um, of um, action within our bodies, I would imagine, maybe not, but that's a, that's a pretty exciting thought. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's for the ocean. And it takes in a tremendous amount of carbon, a tremendous amount of carbon. So that's one of the reasons why it's, it's the primary, you know, um, sponge of carbon and why you know as the oceans get full of carbon that we're emitting on top of everything else that it's already you know taking in um it, it gets to a point where it can't take any more in and we're very close to that point so we have to be all the more careful and all the more rapid in our response to 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 heal the ocean because the, the ocean is not just the womb that we crawled out of. It's, uh, it's, it's also what um, the main source of life on earth and continued life on earth. So we need the ocean to be alive. Mm. So that's something that's really, really important for our breath and, and you know, for, for life just in general. Um, the forest, I think most people understand but what I was surprised about with forests is that we get um, the most oxygen from the trees that are closest to us. Okay. So having trees around our house, um, living in areas that are forested or close to parks, um, having cities that have a lot of trees in them, it's not just about them capturing the, the black carbon that floats in the air from our car exhausts and things because they do help clear the air, but they also, and cool the air, which is really, really important, but they also create a lot of the oxygen that we're breathing when we're closest to them. So that's something that's really nice. It's wonderful to have a tree as your neighbor. So yeah, invite a tree into your yard and, um, and it'll make you happy in many, many ways. Um, and the soil, uh, that's still something that I'm discovering, just how important the soils are. It's more than just dirt under our feet. Um, soil that's healthy is sucking in a tremendous amount of carbon. Again, also a lot of carbon. Um, and it, uh, that carbon helps feed the plants that then, you know, cre help create oxygen because they're breathing us in. And, and I think there's also microbes in the soil that, in, that also do that work. I'm, I'm not um, really very versed in the soil part, but uh, I think it's something that's still, it's being looked at more closely now by scientists than by you know, big organizations like the Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN. Um, but that's something that's really exciting. So we have to be really respectful of the, the dirt under our feet also of what we walk on because it also helps in, um, in creating and keeping the balance of, uh, of our breath. Yeah, and it's what's interesting from what you're saying is, is this part of the breathing that we don't think too much is the fact that they recycle all these organs, 
not only the plants or the, the, the trees, but recycle the, the carbon dioxide that we exhale or that we give through other uh, means. So, so it's a, it's a power, powerful recycling um, uh, and giving back no? uh, the earth. So, um, and I, I'm, I'm seeing that with my compost because we do compost at home with the organic food and, and um, the, things, the things that can be compostable. No? So it's quite amazing to, to see, for example, the trunk of an anana, uh, the pineapple no? <laughs> that you put and then it disappear completely. There are other things that do not, but that one, yes, it does. No? So it's quite, uh, it's quite amazing to see what comes out of that with a little, and the life that's in, in this, uh, this soil, with that's, that's a physical soil that you can make at home and everybody who has a little bit of a space can, can do something like that now with special uh, uh, containers that you can have. Uh, I'm living in a place where it's, I'm lucky that the, the, um, the, the little city where we are living, they offered the people like five, well, maybe more, six, seven years ago, they offered freely uh, these compostable things um, for the people to do at home and also to train, to teach the people how to do it. And then when you do it and they check it every two years to see how it works, then you have a reduced tax income on, on your footprint on the, of the city in a way, no? Great. Um, yeah, it's really it's really interesting, and I'm seeing also other areas where they have like more when there is a lot of apartments, for example, it's a little more difficult. Then there are places where they do a um, like communitary uh, uh, compost or something like that. Anyway, going back to the breathing, um, I would like to to introduce also our, our people to your project, which is also something that was born around that time in 2015 and it's called one minute for earth and it's an amazing project I, that i i prefer that you present it because it's so simple and so powerful at the same time yes <clears throat> well it goes back to what i was saying at the beginning that um that we create everything we have created everything through through focused um intention and um and visualization <clears throat> that we get inspired about you know i mean who thought of the first chair or you know and the computers all of that so um in 2015 a lot of things <clears throat> excuse me a lot of things were inspired in 2015 I'm just gonna And um, it's interesting because it was like energies coming together and poof, and op doors opening and people realizing a lot of things in 2015 and the Paris Agreement coming into play, uh, which was something that was quite um, ex exceptional, extraordinary, actually. Um, but the, the project came out of just realizing that, for one thing, I mean, we, we don't stop enough to focus on the essentials, <clears throat> to focus on what's really important in our lives and on earth, which are connected, our life on, and earth, the importance of both. And um, so we stop <clears throat> whenever there's, um, there's a tragedy or, or death, we stop for a moment of silence. Even the UN does that. The United Nations and their General Assembly and, and in other events. Um, but I thought, well, what if we stopped for a moment, if we gave ourselves that moment to envision the world we want to live in, instead of always going, uh, uniting around catastrophe and trauma, why not unite our creative abilities through our visualization? That's where it starts creates an energy that uh, an energetic wave that can go out into the world and connect to other people it's amazing how many people can be inspired by the same thing at the same time it's mm -hmm. really incredible so to use that moment of silence to envision a healthy sustainable equitable peaceful world which is something that unless you're insane 
That's what you want. That's what we all want. We want that for ourselves, definitely. Um, you know, I really believe in the, uh, in the power of um, the people standing up and saying, this is the line you cannot cross. You know, they are the guardians. They are warriors and protectors, and they're really important. And at the same time, we have to have a force that is envisioning the world that we want to create. We don't want that world anymore, but what world do we want? Mm -hmm. So let's start by stopping and giving ourselves a minute to think about that and to bring ourselves into that space of possibilities. And that's where the breath helps. So if we just stop and we close our eyes and we take a few breaths in, and we connect also to those big organs of earth, we connect to earth through every single breath, then it's easy to envision a healthy planet. Mm. And it's, it's more needed now than ever, because we, when we see the world today with the pandemic and all the things that surround it and the economic and all the crisis that generates, um, that's also a creation that we've done in a way altogether the, the the collectiveness of humanity unconsciously true or behavior true or sometimes negativity it's easier to focus on something negative than something positive human being can do that unfortunately so it's also something we need to be we are not victim of something coming out from there you were talking about the power of creation no uh, um, and it's all over. It's an international. It's a, not an. It's a universal law. We we don't escape from that. So I'm. I'm. It's interesting because I'm following quite a few different movements, and they are in all the countries and all the languages. There are communities and people coming together, especially since 2020, even before uh, the pandemic was coming, because. People knew astrologically talking that something big was going was was happening, no. And pe some people knew that even way before. So I'm seeing that a lot of communities are coming together to to meditate together. I'm in a group like that, uh, meditating together each day at 7:30 in the morning for 15 minutes, and we do that. We we envision we envision the the the, the humanity, a, a sane humanity, a humanity that's that has come over whatever obstacle that we are now living in, and the power struggle and all of these things that are causing this drama we are living in or we are seeing right now. Um, so it's today is the way of is is the place where we can create the future. And um, but it's what's interesting is that in all of these communities, I'm, and I'm saying I'm following some in French and I'm following following sometimes some in English, some in Spanish there is not so much conscience about uh, association associating the breath with the visualization and i think that's something that you are bringing probably now we need more than one minute maybe we needed one minute in in 2015 and probably now we can need 10 or 15 minutes like we do in the morning but it's the, this association of the breath and the the visualization that would i would like you to talk a little more about that and then i would like to propose some uh, maybe not a minute but even a little more so we can we can all all the people who are listening right now or, or later to this uh, video um can do it no let's uh, let's give this opportunity also yes absolutely um, so to go to the point about um, the, the minute, I called it one minute for Earth because, um, because of the minute of silence and also because a minute is something that most people would say, ah, I can do a minute. You start with a minute and then you usually end up with five or 10 or 15 or more because it takes you to such a wonderful space. And you're right, speaking to the point about um, all of the, the, the messaging that's been put out there um, and, and it's, uh, uh, that's very negative 
And it's one of the things actually that got me to this place of, you know, finding that door and why it was such an inshallah for me, which is like, a, oh my God, thank God, because I was really feeling very helpless and hopeless. I was editing some papers, some scientific papers that were showing the state of the world and where we were heading and no one seemed to care. And I wanted to talk about it all the time. Did you know that this is happening? And people couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was told a few things by a few friends, which really kind of woke me up because um, they're saying things like, I don't want to feel guilty about it. I don't want to feel responsible. I don't want to feel the weight of it because I don't know what to do about it. And so when we feel inspired, it's easy to do things. It makes it a lot easier. And you're doing it from a place of um, usually love and joy. So I talk about fierce love. And for me, fierce love is, um, is it, it, it energizes me. It's, it's that space where um, I can act from a place of love and compassion and understanding but also from a place of, this is the red line. That it, it, this is where it has to stop. And it also feeds me the energy I need to do the changes I need to make in order to achieve my goal, achieve my vision of a healthy planet. And it can be a small thing. It could be just you know, seeing a piece of plastic on, on the sidewalk and picking it up and putting it in the recycling. It could be something really simple and or it can be something much more complicated, like getting rid of the car and getting an electric bike or just a regular bicycle or using public transit, which I know is challenging at the moment, but it'll, you know, we'll get back to a point where we can do these things. So it's just the inspiration every day of, uh, of putting ourselves in that space of possibility and positivity. And it's, it's, you know, for everyone to know that it is a very normal thing. We are hardwired to pay attention to danger. It's a matter of survival. Right. It takes some effort. It takes a choice to put ourselves in a state of positivity and possibility. We have to choose to do it. And I know that when we're in a state of, of um, anxiety and depression, it's hard to make that choice, but it's not impossible. So um, I encourage everyone to just try it. We can feed ourselves the possibilities and the positivity that we need to move forward and to do the changes that we need to do. And I, I, I also see it as, um, you know, it feels like there's like a bunch of Goliaths out there and we're just, a little David, but I want to, the way I see it is that there's one Goliath. We're just starting to see different pieces of that Goliath, but there's one, but there's a billion Davids. All of us are Davids and we all have something in our hand and in our heart and in our head that we can do to beat down the Goliath or to transform the situation. So, yeah. In they fact, pick up the tool. <laughs> in fact, what you you explained that to me now, now I'm I'm remind I'm remembering um, uh, canalization channeling you say in English, no, uh, given by someone I'm following in friends that I trust very much, and she was saying that was in the beginning of March April 2020, the beginning of the pandemic, and she got a message from her guides. And, and the message, which is now really, mm, the message is, is totally proved scientifically with neuroscience, which is the power of, of what you focus on. Like we, we, we said that already, no? But what, what I'm, I want to return to this because the message was sometimes, as you say, we feel like impotent. I'm, I'm now reading a book, like, a book about no plastic and Many times I want to close it because it's like, oh my God, to, it's, it looks like a huge uh, work to do, especially when you are a family and, and not, not everybody in, in, your, in the people who are living close are ready to make the changes. So it's, it looks like 
difficult, no? And, and then you're saying, people say, well, then I prefer not to look at it and continue to live my, my easy life. But one thing that I, am, that I found really powerful is this power of visualization, this power of, I will, I will focus, even if I'm laying down, that's what the message was saying. Even if I'm laying down in the hospital bed, I can still breathe and I can still connect with my heart and I can still send light or, or even just breathe the, the, the light, the love, which is, a, which is an amazing, powerful um, ve vehicle of change, of yes. positive change. No? So that's why I think this, this um, for the people who, who feel like it's too much to make physical changes or to really do some, I don't know, act, we don't need all to be activists. We don't need all to do, but what we can all do is to breathe and focus on what we want to see and, and start to really be excited about the image that are coming to us of, uh, of, the, of the world of tomorrow, which at the end we are creating today. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and I, for me, at least, who some, which sometimes I'm, I'm sometimes having difficulties of, of, because I'm very sensitive. So when I, when I collect plastic around the, my neighbors, and and sometimes I go for a walk and I see things incredible, and especially since the pandemic, it's more trash. And sometimes I even don't go out those walks. And sometimes I have the strength to take plastic out and sometimes I don't, no? But uh, yeah, it's like, even if just waking up in the morning, still laying down in bed, we can already contribute. And then what's, what's interesting is the message of the more we feel we, can, we contribute, even if it's just a little uh, um, um, sand, a little stone or whatever, um, in the sand and the beach, um, we the fact of feeling that you are contributing something positive is automatically in a very profound and very deep way increasing your immune system. Yeah. So it's yeah. all linked. It's all linked to this uh, ecosystem, like you were saying. Yeah. 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 We we are we are an organism of the planet. And our actions and our thoughts, because our thoughts have matter, and they matter. Um, they have an impact on on the whole. And I think uh, you know, I think it's really important that we realize that every single one of us is really important in in this whole experience. Every one of us, and every one of our thoughts, and every one of our breaths. Yeah. Someone was even saying the other day that um, even though we always see what's not going well, <laughs> you know, because it says when you when the tree when the tree is falling, it makes noise. So the media is retransmitting that noise, and we see that. But we, when the grass, the new grass is coming up in the forest, it doesn't make any noise. And then it says the trees, the old stuff, what's no longer sustainable will fall by itself anyway. So let's focus on the grass that's coming up. And that's what every person can do by this visualization, by just sometimes what I do also myself is connecting my heart. And I imagine just like me with sending, I don't know, sometimes I just imagine like there is a cord of light connecting my heart to the heart of the of the earth and I breathe like that no and I, I follow this movement and and it's just pleasurable it's like you say that you don't have to have it right or anything it's just the intention that counts no yeah so that's really uh that's really amazing so maybe we can do a little practice uh are you ready or you wanted to say something first before mm -hmm. that um, no, I just I just that everyone can do this and everyone's already doing this. So it's yeah. just a matter of doing it consciously. And and yeah, just having yeah. everyone is already breathing. That's what you're saying, no? 
Everyone's already breathing, but everyone's already creating through visualization. They're already doing it. If you've achieved anything in your life, if you're walking or talking or, you know, cooking or working, if you're going to school, you've already, you're already proving that this is how it works and that you can do it. Mm. So it's just a matter of now doing it consciously for a very specific, hopefully global focus yeah. and outcome that we really need to achieve. And we know also, I just want to say to the people who are listening to us, maybe they know that already, but I always think the people know everything. <laughs> but then you realize it's not always the case, no? So that some people have been making studies, and I don't know how they come with these numbers, that only only uh, square uh, root square, how you say that in English, or root square of one of the root square of one of the, the entire population is necessary to make a complete shift yeah. in intention. So it's not like we need the seven uh, billions of people to do that at the same time. We need, we need really a, a very small number, which sometimes I find it, is it really real that it's probably around, I think, eight, some uh, between 8,000, 9,000. I'm, I'm doubting myself. I'm it's, it's, a little over, it's a little over 3%. So about, I think it's oh, about 3%. Okay. So the numbers are, diff like, are, are changing depending a little bit of who is talking about that. But anyway, we know that a small fraction of the population, well, a, a fraction of the population is good enough so that the change become implemented by everyone. And we've seen that with many things. We've seen that with the microwaves and we've seen that with yoga. We've seen that with a lot of things, no? We've seen it with organic food. Also. Yeah, we've seen, yeah. It doesn't take, it doesn't take much, which is also why it's important to speak up and, and say, this is what I want. Instead of this, I, I want this. And, and eventually, if enough people ask, then it starts happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even in the big grocery store. Okay, let's start. All right, <clears throat> so just position yourself comfortably wherever you are, standing, sitting, lying down, and close your eyes. When you close your eyes, it brings you inside. And now you can just start becoming aware of your breath. And you don't need to breathe in any particular way. Just breathe normally. Just breathe with awareness that you are breathing. And that that breath is going into your body and out of your body. And when you become aware of that, start becoming aware that that breath is coming in from earth. And then when you exhale, that earth is breathing that in. If you want, you can bring yourself to a place, a natural place that you really love or that you would love to go to. I think all of us have had at least one experience of being in a place in nature that was really beautiful and that we thought I could stay here forever. For some people, that's on a sandy beach, by a lake or by the ocean, listening to the waves crashing in, or the soft sound of the waves moving out over the pebbles, breathing in the sea air, knowing that that ocean is breathing us in also.
and envisioning that ocean clean, healthy, teeming with sea life, alive, vibrant. Or that favorite place could be sitting under a tree with your back up against the trunk, feeling the roughness of the trunk, feeling the aliveness of the tree. It's either in a forest, in the park at the end of your street, in your backyard, doesn't matter. The tree is alive. It's creating oxygen. And it's breathing you in. You are in relationship with that tree. Feel its generosity. Feel gratitude for its offerings, for its gifts. Where that favorite place could be in a field, lying on grass, looking up to the sky, watching the clouds rolling by. And as you breathe, you're breathing in the soil. And you're imagining it healthy. And all of the living creatures, there's so much that's alive in soil. And they're all healthy and strong and vibrant, doing their work of keeping Earth alive, keeping us alive. These are the respiratory organs of planet Earth. That little blue pearl of a planet that we call home. It gives freely, everything freely. And we help it by seeing it healthy and vibrant and alive and peaceful. And today, right now, as we're feeling it, that connection, undeniable, vital connection that we have with planet Earth, we can also promise ourselves to continue to do everything we can to honor Mother Earth by connecting with her every day, by acknowledging her gifts, by feeling the gratitude, by connecting with her with every breath, seeing her alive and healthy and doing everything we can today, right now, to make that so. Take one more breath. And you can open your eyes. And that's it. Mm, thank you. So you can make up your own vision. Every day it changes for me. I go to different places. I feel different things. Sometimes I feel sadness, but I always transform that sadness into action. 
And I think that's the most important part of all of this is to remember that we are more powerful than we think. And together we're more powerful than we can imagine. And that every action makes a difference and every thought leads to an action that makes a difference. Okay, a little word to, to finish um, today, Marie-Thérèse. Um, just happy Mother Earth Day to everyone. And um, if you do anything today, at the very least, think good thoughts for Earth mm. and be inspired by those thoughts and allow yourself to be led by those thoughts and guided into action. Just show your love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's great. And we have a lot of opportunities to to show our love, no? And of course, to Earth. And if you don't directly feel like that, there are so many beautiful things around us that nature is offering us to look at. Yes. And also the other human beings or families or children or the family, the, the world family, um, which, which are, we are the population with the animals and all the other living being, you know, yes. of this uh, ecosphere. So um, all of those is, um, we are just part. Yes, we're all part of that. It's all our family. 